Hey guys, I'm LB, and between episodes, the game crashed. So, I don't know where it's gonna put us. Last episode we left off, we were at the computer, but... I, uh, I was... I, I tabbed out to do something, I got back to the game, and it was, it was working fine for, like, a few seconds, but then... After a few seconds, it, it crashed. So, I don't know. Weird. That's like... This, this game has been weird, basically, because before it used to crash on exit, and then it stopped doing that. And, uh, now it just crashed randomly for no reason. Okay, so what we were doing, we were at the computer terminal. We don't have to go to the same terminal, we can go to any terminal, but... You know, I just wanted to go to this one. Uh, we're gonna have to resolve this part- parts of the puzzle that we- that we solved last episode. But, it did save our progress of freeing the dude, so... This is good, this is good. That's exactly how I wanted things to be. Good. Okay... I think this episode we should start doing the stuff with attachments. So let's try this one. Credits. Interesting. So it is a text adventure. <laughs> Your name is Arthur Sadko, and you are a young human of the medieval age. You live in beautiful Gardarkriki on the Frisian coast. One day, you are sitting on the beach, playing the piano, when suddenly a huge monster comes out of the water. As it turns out, it's not actually a monster. You just thought that because you were startled. It is, in fact, a very large bipedal whale <laughs> that beckoned you over to talk. <laughs> bipedal whale. <laughs> talk to the bipedal whale. Greetings, the beast intones. I am Hatsmihit, Chief Fish. I heard your beautiful music and was impressed. Would you like to become a knight? Uh, okay. <laughs> Excellent, then follow me to my palace under the sea where a mighty quest awaits you. <laughs> Hadvihit's place is made of palace is made of corals and gemstones. It floats under the sea, full of amazing colors. The guards are seals. Do they know humans can't breathe? Was that lost in the archive? Did nobody in the archive mention the fact that humans can't breathe underwater? Welcome, welcome, young human. I am glad you came, for we have great need of your skills. A terrible monster terrorizes the deep. The dark serpent god they call... Uh, the gar- Yeah, The dark serpent god, Zmei Chernobyl. <laughs> yes, it looks like there have been many misinterpretations of stuff in the archive. If we make you a knight, do you promise to defeat this vile beast? Sure. Very well, then. I pronounce you... Vanquish our enemy, you may want to prepare first. Um, let's see... Let's go to the... What's our stats? At present, you carry the following objects... NOTHING! <laughs> Yep, this is a text adventure, exactly as I'd expected. Let's go to the old hut. A smelly old hut. On a wide sandy plain there lives a hermit called Spatula Prodrig Evidilla, who was once the greatest mage in all of Norfolk, but whose defeat at the claws of Zmei Chernobyl has turned him into a wretched shadow of his former self. He sits in his hut all day, mumbling about the days that once were. In his hands, he holds a powerful magical amulet, which he has forgotten how to use. What does this do? Tell him... Defeat is no reason to give up. He may not be the great mage he once was, or a hero he wanted to be, but that doesn't mean he has to be a wreck. But then each of us exists infinitely, of time and space, and therein we can all find peace and contentment. All he needs to do is lead the struggle to others. After some hesitation, the old man gives you the amulet. He seems relieved.
Alright, let's go to the inn. Emmy's Underwater Inn. Emmy's Inn is a popular travel destination for mer people seeking to enjoy the restorative properties of the nearby thermal vents. It's a lovely building, three stories, classic Hypothesian <laughs> Norfolk style. Emmy herself is a kindly old woman, slightly round, and an excellent cook. <laughs> We should probably eat something, right? The order is special today. Blah blah blah. You know it's a small problem. There's a shield in my soup. <laughs> the waiter seems shocked. Oh dear, he says. Oh dearie dear, dear. How terrible. How embarrassing. Allow me to apologize most profusely. He hesitates. Would you like to keep the shield or should I throw it away? Very good, sir and or madam, he says. Handing you the shield. He brings you another soup. It's excellent, and you feel profoundly sated. Uh, might as well get a room, right? We wanna get some sleep before we actually, uh, take on the demon, right? Get a room. Slightly haunted, but <laughs> otherwise fine. <laughs> Do you want to have a strange dream? Sure, let's have a strange dream. You dream of an eternal cycle of suffering, which is... Surprisingly funny. A singing clownfish who can see the future, and the future is the past, the past is the future, the present is suffering. Surrounded by past and future, the clownfish is trapped in a fishbowl, where the stars never change, as a cat for some reason, <laughs> and an infinite void that turns inside out. <laughs> and you are the clownfish. <laughs> You wake up with the strange feeling of half remembering something. The memory will soon fade. That's basically what they're going through, right? All right. Wait, there's a temple now. Let's go to the temple. You're not quite sure how you found this place, but you can sense its power. Even though the temple consists of no more than a few columns surrounding a fishbowl, an ancient magic ma yeah, an ancient magic infuses the place. A man dressed in rough robes approaches you. You have come, he says. You have come to hear the word of Talos! <laughs> <laughs> uh, only two options were to kill him or run away. Well, perhaps let's just run away. Well, the temple's gone now, so, uh... <laughs> let's head to the evil lair. Evil Lair of Zibe Chernobyl. Are you sure you want to take on the Evil Serpent? Are you prepared? Um, let's check our inventory. Stats. No weapon. A smelly hermit amulet. A shield. And, uh... Tourist guide? What the heck is a tourist guide? There's apparently a way we can get a lantern. Huh. Okay, well... I wanna see what happens if we take on the serpent right now, with just the amulet and the shield. Shield of soup! <laughs> okay. Um, evil lair. Attack! What, without a weapon? Yes. Congratulations, you've just vanquished an evil serpent god with your bare hands. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, right, dream <laughs> Alright. Maybe there's something at the palace we can look at. Like, are they gonna give us a weapon? If I knew how to beat you, I would've done it myself. The hermit grumbles. Or, or had hey, it grumbles, not the hermit. However, I just found this old tourist guide and I thought you might find it useful. Don't miss- don't mind the stains. <laughs> there's a dungeon. <laughs> Scenic dungeon. The beautiful dungeon in traditional Norfolk style. Handcrafted stone walls rise from the sea floor, adorned with exquisite algae. An old brass lantern stands on a table near the entrance, but you're not sure whether you're allowed to take it. Let's look at the lantern. It says we're able to take it. You see a sign that says free lanterns. Let's take it. You take the lantern, we enter the dungeon. You enter the dungeon. Inside is as beautiful as the outside. A maze of twisty little passages, all tastefully arranged. You walk north for a while, nothing the high quality of interior design. noting the high quality of interior design. 
The torches, in particular, have been placed with utmost care at the very sorry at very precise intervals. The effect is delightful. At the end of a long corridor, you come upon a room in which a butler appears to be waiting for you. His face is made of skin, but underneath you can hear the whirring of, a mach of machine parts. Greetings, good sir. I am Samuel the Butler. I have awaited your coming since the beginning of time. A prophecy spoke of your battle against the monstrous Zne Chernobyl. Ah yes, the vile serpent god that seeks to control our world. A foul beast, never leaving us in peace with his laws and que his questions. Peace is all we desire, you see. The eternal peace of the cycles of time within each of us can exist without attachment or fear. Simply being at one with the world. To bring this about, you'll require a sword, which I've prepared for you. I'm sure, let's take the sword. Excellent. I do hope you are successful in your quest. If not, please tell Zmei Chernobyl to send the sword back so I can present it to the next chosen one, will you? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and the butler goes somewhere else. Oh, interesting. There is certainly some humor in this. Let's go check our stats. Uh, everything's filled out, so... Let's go to the evil lair, then. Attack! You confront the serpent god's major noble and his lair. The fight is long and hard, but at last you succeed with so many before you have failed. You emerge from the lair covered in blood, your hands trembling, a huge tooth embedded in your shoulder, and carrying the head of Zmei Chernobyl. You are victorious! You enter the palace triumphantly holding up your trophy. The guards are clapping. I can't believe you actually did it! Heaven says, you are a true knight, you deserve a great reward! Uh, accept the reward. The greatest reward is inspiration. Hear my song and free your imagination. He begins to sing. The song is simple, but hauntingly beautiful. You begin to fade. You find yourself on the beach where it all began, near your home in Gadarki in the Frisian coast, playing the piano with your eyes closed. You feel like you just drifted off to sleep for a while, but now inspiration has struck and you're composing a hauntingly beautiful piece of music in your head. Some of your friends worry that they'll never leave the village, that they'll never have any adventures. But you don't share that fear. You know that freedom is within you, and you can find whole worlds just sitting here, gazing out at infinity. So it's a story about imagin- nah, imagination, I guess. Congratulations, for exploring another world, your profile status has been increased! Ah, yes, this is exactly what I expected. You have received one Thread Creation token. This will be available to you the next time you log in. Alright, let's, um... Jefferson Goldblum. Y'all can read that if you want to. Pause and read it now, or forever hold your peace. Let's continue... Pause and read that last one now, or forever hold your peace. Read episode 125. Okay. Just as Jefferson was about to fall into the mine pit, a hand grabbed his from above and pulled him up. It was Ginny HD! Ginny, he said, I thought you were dead! Oh, Jefferson, she said, I was imprisoned by the power of Dr. Elion. Dr. Elion? I thought he was dead! No, Jefferson, he escaped into the ninth dimension. The ninth dimension? There is no such place! Yes, there is, Jefferson! He said... He said you created it. I created it? She nodded. Jefferson adjusted his guitar, <laughs> as he always did when deep in thought. Suddenly, his face lit up with understanding. Of course! When I invented and played the ninth chord to defeat the Wizard of Crime, I must have set off a harmonic vibration that expanded the dimensional continuum. I created the ninth dimension. Jefferson stared into the sunset, his human brain full of emotional calculations. <laughs> I created a new world, he said. But then I unleashed my greatest nemesis upon it. It could have been paradise, but now, Dr. Elian will enslave it. Not if we get there before he can take over, Jefferson. Do you still have my motorcycle? Of course, Jenny. I could never give up your motorcycle. You know I have an irrational attachment to material objects based on the impersonal connections they represent. It is my greatest weakness, but also my greatest strength. <laughs> Uh, Jefferson rummaged through his pockets and found the motorcycle. Ginny grinned. Get on, Jefferson, and let me show you how to ride! 
Jefferson calculated the correct vector, Ginny adjusted the velocity settings, and off they rode into the sunset. Through the sunset, and into the ninth dimension. <laughs> oh my gosh! I gotta hand it to Crow Team, this is- this is very creatively funny. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let's read this one. Some thoughts on the art form called poetry. I've thought about this too, but maybe it's wrong to focus on such negativity? We certainly seem to be in a very fertile period at the moment. I don't have an opinion, but I'm impressed by your work, Mosler. You know so much more about the past than any of us. Your theories are interesting, but I'm sure Milton would point out some pretty big gaps in your assumptions. Milton isn't here, dog, and neither is Elohim. All we have is what we can find in the fragments of the archive and what we can piece together using our minds. I'm sure I've made many mistakes, just like the humans made mistakes when trying to understand their own past. Not all these schools may have been what they seem. I don't trust pastoralism. Pastors engaged in large-scale food sterilization in what may have been an attempt to control evolution. What's food? Gehenna is our process, Vibruba. As long as we remember that, we won't stagnate. Maybe one of us should try to write poetry. Okay, let's read it. As far as I can tell, poetry was a human art form that involved that nah, human art form that involved writing short sentences that ended in words with similar letters. Humans were obsessed with pattern recognition, and I think the sequences of sounds created by poetry pleased that aspect of their brains. There were many schools of poetry, institutions that taught a specific way of writing poetry. Students sometimes changed allegiance and had to leave the school, which was difficult due to the lack of affordable public transport in many human empires. Important schools of poetry included Hellenism, Lyricism, Pastoralism, Romanticism, Symbolism, Communism, <laughs> Modernism, Autoeroticism, <laughs> Postmodernism, and Lolcatism. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not sure I can fully back this up, but I feel like in later years, poetry somehow stagnated. Most of the poetry from the later human centuries seems to be lacking the quality of craft that defines the earlier work, and there are even texts that suggest that poetry intentionally no longer aimed at aesthetics or even pleasure. Poetry became disconnected from the human process. The poets, Adrian Mitchell famously wrote, Most people ignore most poetry because most poetry ignores most people. I can't help but wonder that kind of stagnation... I can't help but wonder whether that kind of stagnation can happen to us, too. How long can our work keep flourishing when we are so limited? We are outside Elohim's process, but where is our process? We must consider such questions carefully if we are to preserve Gehenna and its achievements. Interesting. Alright. Uh, we still can't access this. What's the new gallery season? Voting is now closed while we tally up the results. Of course you may continue to explore the gallery at your leisure. How convenient, the vote was closed just before I got here. Good luck everyone, I wouldn't let my newfound freedom come between me and watching the live results. The results are in. Dremel, third place, Nave, with where the humans live. Uh, first place in the pretty blah, 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 blah. There was a very tight competition this season for first and second places, and in the end it came down to a single deciding vote. Oh, so I could have voted, but I missed my opportunity. Interesting. The collection of natural history heroes. We won. Okay, okay. Finally, the first place this season, uh, by a single vote, and next season's, uh, every team seems to love this guy, it's the blacksmith with his abstract collection. I don't know why everyone keeps voting for this guy when he never shows up in person. <laughs> Congratulations also to all those who voted for the blacksmith, be sure to check in for your rewards. Interesting. Who exactly turned the vote? Lamb had the deciding vote as it happened. That's not how deciding votes work! That's not- You can't turn the vote! That's not how it works! That's not how any of this works! Anyway, we will explore the rest of these next episode. 
You didn't select the winner and gained no profile status. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. Aw, oh, well. Well, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you all... Wait, what? Accept direct message. Alright, we're gonna do this next episode, so as always, thank you for watching. If you hate the sound of my voice, leave a dislike. Cause it's up to you. Uh... What am I saying? I don't know. I'm distracted by this. Goodbye, we'll see you next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>